Hello and welcome to the Aid Station. I'm Chris Robb and today massively excited to be heading to Honolulu in Hawaii to meet the lady who just told me she's the ex-Terra Mama, Janet Clark, president of Team Unlimited. So wonderful to meet you, Janet. And likewise, uh, it's been a, a small world. We had a little discussion before that showed us the, how, how much we all have in common in the endurance world, I think. <laughs> Yeah, such a small world. And you've got an incredible story we were talking about, which obviously started off in Australia. We've still got a bit of that Australian twang in there. But I'd love you to tell us a little bit about your story, please, Janet. Well, I, um, a long time ago, no, I actually originally came to Hawaii when I was in uh, college as an exchange student at the University of Hawaii. And uh, they said to me, would you like to go to Hawaii and do a semester there? And I, I thought for about one second, uh, because I was a surfer. And of course, you've read, of, you know, as surfers, you, you know, Hawaii is Mecca. So I was like, of course, I'm going to go to Hawaii. So I came to Hawaii. I did my uh, semester, went home, did finish, finish up my degree. Uh, in the meantime, I'd fallen in love. So I came back, I got married, I got, got work. And the, the field that I ended up in was um, advertising. Um, I was a, a trained uh, teacher, um, but I never actually taught because when I got here, there weren't any teaching jobs. So um, thank goodness I landed in advertising because it was very kind to me for many, many years. And so I am a marketing slash advertising professional and, um, you know, spent basically my whole life in, in that area. And uh, some 20 some years ago, I was hired by one of my clients to, to run his um, tourism marketing business which was, uh, I thought, oh, great, you know, it's a nice change. Um, although at the time, uh, my daughter cried cr like a crazy thing because she really loved my current boss and um, told me, I don't like that guy, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, I ended up uh, making that switch and it turned out to be a fabulous um, opportunity for me because um, not only was I doing marketing for tourism, but uh, they were already in the event business and so I was marketing a bunch of events. Um, including ocean events and uh, uh, road racing events and ultimately mountain, bike, mountain biking events and finally Xterra. So that's how I got to where I am. Well, it's, a, it's an amazing story. And you were saying, I mean, at one stage you had, what did you say, how many events over 10 days on Waikiki Beach as part of your, your ocean well, event? Our Ocean Fest event had 200 events in 10 days. They were a combination of uh, uh, sporting and entertainment events, but uh, it was a wild circus and... Um, a little, a little bit bigger than I think any of us anticipated it was ever going to get. But uh, wow. uh, that, that business is still going uh, with a different ownership. Fantastic. And then obviously Xterra all over the world and gives you an opportunity. We're talking about to travel, which you love and get back and see your parents. And you've clearly got the longevity genes as well. You're saying both your parents <laughs> back in Canberra and Australia are 91, which is amazing. But I guess yeah. right now, you know, not much chance for anyone to go anywhere. What's, what's life like in Hawaii at the moment? Well, life in Hawaii since March, we've um, basically been working from home and we anticipate we're going to be doing that through the end of the year and possibly longer. Um, it's different <laughs> is how I would describe it. You know, I'm a very social animal. I love people. I really enjoyed being in the office and, uh, you know, I miss that camaraderie and that, that back and forth banter. But, you know, we still do have quite a bit of that with Zoom and so forth. Um, <clears throat> You know, at the present time, uh, Oahu itself is, is completely shut down. We've all been told to stay home and work from home for the next two weeks. So, um, you know, things are not quite under control here on my island uh, uh, of Hawaii, of, of Oahu. But uh, hopefully this will do the trick and we'll, we'll be able to get back to something that's a little bit less restrictive, I'm hoping. Yeah. So that's how it's working. Wow. And, 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 what, and what's kind of like a normal day in terms of lockdown? You're able to get out and exercise and go and do a few things and, and then obviously well, go shopping. You can still, yeah, you can still do all the, the things that you have to do, like go to the grocery store or the hardware store or, um, you know, exercise. But you, uh, the beaches are actually closed for sitting on. Uh, the hiking trails are closed. The um, parks are closed. Um, so if you want to go to the beach or you want to go swimming at the, in the ocean, you basically can walk across the beach, get in the ocean, do your thing, then walk back across the beach and go home. Um, so it's somewhat limited, I would say. Yeah, yeah, but I guess at least... And, and, no, so, and, 
and yeah. no social gatherings basically you know we're, we're supposed to stay home and stay put with our household which in my case consists of a fabulous dog <laughs> well, i'm going to learn to speak dog I by the end of this i think speaking dog soon yeah and you, <laughs> and, you mean, and you mentioned the team and interacting with the team and you love that how, how big is the team that you've got there um well it's kind of hard to put your arms around our team because we're all over the place you know we have uh, four people in hawaii um, we've got an office in uh, minneapolis where there's quite a few people there's people in new york we have people in um in taiwan we've got folks in europe um you know basically we have folks all over the world because yeah. our business is is global and we're in 30 different countries and um uh you know so we have race directors that are all over the world and you know our our core staff is all over the place so it it's challenging to communicate with people everywhere but it is doable the hard thing is to get everybody on a single subject in a single call on a single day yeah that's almost impossible because someone's has to step to midnight in order to make it happen which um has been done on occasion but you try not to do that too often yeah absolutely <laughs> wow and and so how many events and how many have you been able to get away this year so far i mean in a normal year how many xterra races would there be and, and how many have happened so far in 2020 we're in both the trail running and the triathlon business you know most people know us for our off-road triathlon yeah. Um, and that's the one that has the larger country footprint because there's, um, you know, roughly 30 countries that, that host Xterra triathlons. Um, but we do have a fairly good uh, trail running uh, uh, footprint that's a little smaller at the moment, in, uh, primarily in New Zealand and uh, um, uh, Pacific Islands. Mm -hmm. uh, we do do some trail running in, in conjunction with our, with our other events. So, um, you know, we've got a little bit all over the place. Yeah. And, 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 and what have been the biggest challenges during this period of time? I mean, I guess, mate, have you had to lay off staff, obviously rescheduling and rescheduling and rescheduling as everyone's doing, but what, what, what have you felt have been the biggest challenges, Janet? I think the biggest challenge, we actually haven't laid off any of our permanent staff. Um, we're very fortunate in that regard, um, but our event staff is uh, seasonal and with no events, our, our, our event people have not been able to work. So that's, um, that's been very difficult and, and, and tough for them. And, you know, also for us, because we're so used to working together after 25 years, we, you know, it's a, it's a big loss and it's a big hit for them personally. So, you know, hopefully we'll all get back to working uh, together at some time in the near future. Um, but as I mentioned, I think the biggest challenge is trying to get everybody on the same page on the same subject all over the world, <laughs> yeah. which has been somewhat of an ongoing drama, but um, um, it is, uh, it's difficult, but not impossible. So we, we continue to grapple with that one is the best way I can put it. Put it yeah, put <laughs> it, yeah. And, and any sense of, you know, when, when an event might happen, we're starting to see little trickles of events. And I think, you know, of, of all of the portfolio of the mass ecosystem, it seems to me that trail events and, and, and Xterra style of events where you can have smaller wave starts and things are probably better positioned than obviously your big city center marathons and so on. But have you got any that, you know, have you got a date of, of an event that looks like it might be likely to happen somewhere in the world? Um, actually, our European events are the ones that are going right now. And also uh, those that are sort of fairly self-contained, like our, our New Zealand trail runs. We've got a trail run coming up in New Caledonia. We've got some an event in Tahiti. So these sort of these islands or people who are able to isolate themselves, you know, have, have been able to, to um, keep going. Mm -hmm. um, the European scenario is, you know, changes constantly, but, you know, they've done a reasonable job at trying to keep the case counts low. And, uh, you know, like I said, we just had a, a race in France last weekend that uh, went off uh, pretty well. And we will be racing in, in Malta shortly. We'll be racing in uh, Czech Republic next weekend. Mm -hmm. um, so there are three or four, four or five actually, Xterra races that will be happening in Europe. You know, from a US standpoint, that we don't have any racing plan for 2020. We, we started, <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't get very far. We got to the end of February and, and pretty much um, that was it for, for the United States. Yeah. Um, Asia, you know, of course it was, it was shut down fairly early in the piece too. Um, so, yes, you were correct in that there's been a lot of, you know, postpone, cancel, postpone, cancel, push, push, push. Um, but, um, 
you know, we, we do go with whatever the local um, situation restrictions are. Yeah. Um, in most cases, you know, we uh, tell our race directors to, you know, if they can do what they can do within the restrictions of, of what they're seeing in their country, then, you know, we, we surely do support that. Um, but we also understand perfectly well that sometimes you just can't and you got to shut down. Yeah, yeah, got to do the right thing by by those circumstances. And, you know, that's, well, I've been, been hosting lots of different webinars and, you know, there's, there's no one size fits all, is there? It's got to be customized no. to the local situation and the event and so on. Those events you spoke about that have been happening, have you had to radically scale back the numbers in those, Janet, or are you pretty close to what you would normally <laughs> expect for them? Um, I think that they have self-scaled in a little, in a, in a sense. I mean, they haven't been, our races are not, or our events are not huge by comparison, no. as you mentioned, because we're trail oriented. Um, there's only so many people you can put on a trail without turning it into a death march. So, you yeah. know, we're not, um, we're not doing thousands of people um, necessarily, although we do have a, a few big events. Um, <clears throat> so that those events that have happened, you know, have had, uh, safety policies in place, you know, ways of behaving somewhat, they're quite different than what we'd normally be used to because we are a very communal sport. Everybody yeah. knows everybody. They all want to love and hug and, yeah. you know, they stand around and shoot the breeze. And, you know, we're, we're you know, we call it the exterra family and, and that's the way they all behave is that they're very familial kinds of people. So that's the biggest challenge is to, um, trust the athletes to and the organizers and uh, you know the volunteers not to behave like they normally would mm. and that's difficult very yeah. difficult yeah very difficult yeah and, and but it can be done it, it can be done and, and certainly is being done in different places and uh, but you know i guess what you highlight as well people familial liking to hug and whatever i think this is it, you know it's something that people are really missing whether they're part of the exterra family yes, or others true. But, you know people people are desperate to get back and connect and, and i think you know in many ways, it's exciting for our industry when we eventually get out of it, all these people that are, that are uh, you know, taking up running. And, uh, you know, it'd be interesting to see what comes out of Definitely. it. Definitely. Yeah, it'd be very interesting to see what comes out of it. I'm interested and in, 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 in always like to talk about leadership. I mean, clearly, you, you've been in a role with huge global leadership. You even talk about the leadership challenges of bringing these disparate group of people from all over the world together just simply to have a, have a Zoom call. What are some of the leadership <laughs> principles you followed in this long career that you've been in the industry? Any tips for people that are, you know, struggling to lead teams out there at the moment during this challenging time? Well, the best one I ever got was actually from my parents, which is, you know, be, be genuine, be honest and work hard. So that's, that's like my guiding light principle. And, um, you know, from a, a, a leadership or management standpoint, hire good people. Hire good people and let them do their job. Yeah. Um, because that's, you know, it doesn't, that's what, that's what makes things go is when you have a bunch of, of folks who feel um, empowered, yeah. who are passionate about their work um, and feel they can and do make a difference. And, and to me, it is ultimately about the people and their desire. Um, mm. to contribute to the greater good and um, the fact that they're really good at it, it, it just, it just helps. I mean, when they feel like they've done a great job, we know they've done a great job and our athletes know they've done a great job and it's like, it's a win, win, win. So yeah. that'd be my, that's my primary thing. Hire good people and let them do their job. Makes perfect sense. And particularly with the kind of network you've got, I mean, we were just talking about, you know, Friends of both of ours, Fred and Princess yeah. in the Philippines, you know, what better people could you get in the industry? The impact they've made is amazing. But imagine trying to run, run, run them from Hawaii if they weren't doing a good job and you didn't trust and empower <laughs> them to do their job. Impossible. So, uh, yeah, mm. it's, uh, it, it's wonderful to see uh, the impact that they've had over the amazing people. I always love to end... Sorry, carry on. They're great communicators. And that's the other thing is, you know, yeah. to the degree that you can tell everybody and have everybody understand what's going on, what has to happen next, you know, how, how, what it all means, why we're all going this way. Um, that's, that's really helpful and it's vitally important in order to make any kind of progress. Yeah, no, absolutely. 
couldn't agree with you more. I, in yeah. fact, I said very early on in this, the, the people that are going to come out of this best are going to be one of the skills they're going to have to have is communication. And, uh, and, and it's, it's definitely shining through those that have yeah. communicated well are, are in, a, yeah. in a better position. Well, and yeah. I think, you know, we tend to be a little bit entrepreneurial, which is not, you know, which is very self-motivated, self-contained, kind of self-directed. And uh, so some of us have to be better communicators than we might want to be normally. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> great point. <laughs> You're so right. <laughs> Janet, I love, as always, to end on an inspirational note. I'm sure in, uh, in, in all your years, you've seen so many inspiring things. Is there one particular story that you'd like to leave the viewers with, please? Or tip or? There's, you know, there's a couple things that, that float my boat. Um, one is get outside. I mean, being outside, being in nature, doing your thing outside. It, it's, it's a fulfilling fix all for anything that might be wrong with you. And um, that's something that I personally am trying to keep in mind as we work from home is not to be so involved that I don't stop and that I don't go out and that I don't, you know, breathe the salt air and, you know, toil in the yard and actually do physical things outside. I mean, to me, that's the, the number one piece of advice I can give anybody is go outside if you can and really enjoy what Mother Nature dishes out. And thank goodness I work for, for Xterra, who is all about beautiful locations and being outside and enjoying the trails and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, even today without, without the ability to go look at trails um, or, or be, in, be at events, that's, that's a big driver for me is being outside. Yeah. And um, the second thing is, is um, there's a saying, and I, I can't remember who came up with this, but it, it basically it stems from, from my interactions with challenged athletes. Um, challenged athletes are so inspiring, and we just actually did a, a television show that revolved around uh, challenged athletes doing um, Xterra with the help of our friend Bob Babbitt, who, of course, knows a great deal about the challenged athlete uh, community here in the United yeah. States and elsewhere. And, you know, when you look at what challenged athletes do, at what happens to them every day, day after day, without their arm or their leg or whatever physical challenge that they may be facing, they are the most inspiring people on the planet to me. And it comes down to, you know, if these guys are out there running with one leg, mountain biking with one arm, uh, you know, doing this great endurance sport that we all love, you know, what's your excuse? Yeah. And, and to me, that's like the ultimate inspiration is what's your excuse for not being all you can be when these guys are out there doing it every day? Fantastic. What a, what a great note to end on. Janet, it's been fantastic. We could uh, laugh and chat and banter as we did before we came <laughs> online and partly through this. Uh, enjoy the, the rest of the period. I'm sure that with, uh, with a mindset like yours, getting outside and, and focusing on the best, it's, uh, it's going to move by faster than it will for many. And yeah, wonderful meeting you. Thank you so oh, much for so. your time. And you too. And in the meantime, we're cooking up all kinds of content that will keep you engaged. So come on over and uh, we'll show you a little bit of, a, of our world without you actually having to do it. Xterra right. Connects, that's what it's called. Nice to meet you, Chris. Great to and, meet you, Janet. Uh, thanks for the chance. Thank you. Talk soon. Thank, will do. Bye-bye. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs>